Welcome back to What Are Teen Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the T-95, the Tier 9 American turretless tank destroyer, otherwise known as the Doom Turtle, and it's located on the north spawn of Mountain Pass under the command of Andromeda. Okay, game started. 155mm gun, capable of 750 alpha, penetrating 276mm. This used to be the terror of the battlefield, because if you ever came across one of these, well, it was virtually impossible to stop them, and you could track them, but you couldn't penetrate them. They were very difficult to penetrate. But then Wargaming went and nerfed them, yes, as they usually do, and uh, I'm afraid um, it was uh, a case of they made them fairly weak and fairly easy to pen. All you needed to do was get to the sides or put a shell into that engine tank, the fuel tanks at the back, and uh, you could even put a shell between the tracks just underneath the gun mantlets and well they're fairly easy to kill they're not the terror they once were but they're still pretty difficult to take down from the front you just need to be away from the pointy end okay well he's taking it up the bridge road and we're about to see the enemy for the first time oh they're underneath the bridge okay well a number of uh, enemy tanks have managed to get around the corner they're now sitting underneath the bridge and they're being attacked by some var guys but i'm not sure we'll be able to get shots on them but we will be able to get shots on the other guys on the ice road and up ahead is a progetto who just took a massive round for 789 that's a high roll and you see he's just angling slightly and the shots are bouncing off him that's it that's all his oh <laughs> his turret went he just got hit by an e75 and his turret is gone right well we're going to deal with that EVR. okay he's now out the game and now we're in perfect position to deal with all those heavy tanks decided to go up the ice road reload time 15.01 seconds our only problem might be that if those enemy tanks down near the bowl decide to take a pot shot into our sides but from this position, those enemy tanks are in a lot of trouble. Okay, E-75's decided to move up as well. So we'll be alternating with him on taking the shots. Meanwhile, the Strip, well, he's going to go further down to closer to the enemy. Shoot from a different angle. Right, next target, 705 again. Oh, that one didn't go through. Oh, it hit the wrong spot on the 705. Went onto his upper plate, didn't get through the armour. Okay, E75 is still having a bit of fun. Now that 50 TP looks very good, but yeah, we bounced again off the upper plate of that 705. The Striv in the meanwhile is decided to go down the cliff. That's a very bad move. He managed to get down. What have we got over here? Well, a Maltian's come around the corner, and I think we're going to focus on him now to allow the E75 to do his job. Well, he's decided to pull back. We have got a shot at the top of the turret on the 50TP. Nope, shell went over the edge, went over the top of him. Now we don't want to expose our side to that motion if we can help it. 50TP just got hit and because we spotted him, we're going to pick up those spotting. Now, oh, bounced around from the motion. Going for the T10, didn't get through again. Not having much luck with the shells. Mountain's still there. We don't really want to cross the bridge if we can help it because we would take shots on the side from the enemy enemies down there. But we can go for the 705. And again, it doesn't get through. And the 705 pens us for 579. He's getting three shots at our lower plate. Okay, so we're going to have another go. Can we get it into a weak spot? Going for the tracks. This time it works. It connects. A low roll though, and we've finally got a steel wall. We've bounced at least 11 shots and blocked a huge amount of damage in the process. Now the Mountian's going to take a bit of punishment. Going for the cheeks. No, he pulls back into cover before we can shoot, and he's rocking backwards and forwards to avoid getting hit. But we put one through his capola, and that's one's body can't really hide. 
and well he fires another one into us and he does get home this time it went between the tracks i think and now the martian's getting a track from a different direction as well we put another one through his capola again it's a low roll but not by much and he's taken out by the e75 so that's very good now we can get to focus on these guys down on the ice road and they're being attacked from two different directions this time round 705 oh he bounced it again but he's out the game and that was the last enemy tank so very good round there by andromeda except of course all those bounces let's have a look at the end of battle stats and see how he got on well, it's the first class tanker for Andromeda in the T95, the Doom Turtle. He managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, mostly the enemy tanks down the ice road, a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle, a bruise in the middle for getting at least five critical hits, he got six, and a steel wall for blocking the most damage in that game, at least 11 hits and over a thousand hit points in damage and surviving. 3,700 was the win eight for that game. So let's have a look at team score. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the object 277 on our team. He did 5,335 hit points of damage, whereas Andromeda did 4,007 hit points of damage. He would have done a lot more had it not been for those shells bouncing off the 705s, which was absolutely dreadful. They just kept bouncing off the front plates. Uh, they're just super steel. Well, they're Soviet, aren't they? And this is an American tank destroyer. So what would you think? Of course it's going to bounce. Uh, <laughs> oh yes we shouldn't have any soviet bias should we hmm okay right well if you look at the scores and the number of kills you can see there was an awful lot of tanks who managed to get two kills a piece on his team there were six of them and only three other players managed to get a kill and one of them was andromeda he managed to get one kill and uh, when it came to base xp yes he's top of the table 1144 base experience points he not only spotted a lot of damage he blocked a lot of damage in that game and did a lot of damage as well let's have a look at the team score the detail report rather 12 shots fired 11 direct hits but only six of them were penetrations damage of 4,007 hit points of which 689 were at more than 300 meters he received 50 15 hits from the enemy, two of which were penetrations, 13 non-penetrations, and 4,800 hit points blocked. And he spotted two enemy vehicles, damaged five of the enemy, killed one, and did 2,801, uh, 2,809 hit points of spotting assist in that game. On a free player count, he earned 44,309 credits, and after repair and ammunition respline, yes, he did use a bit of premium ammo during that game. He actually ended up with a loss um, of 8,185 credits, but that's not a huge amount. You'll probably make that back very shortly indeed. He got one bomb for getting the steel wall, and 1,144 base XP. 4,576 for completing the mission and events took home 5,720 altogether and the mission only lasted five minutes would you believe that so uh, yes that was a fairly quick game but a lot of fun because uh, all those tanks who were just firing around at and the, all the ones that were bouncing off the armor only two penetrated and I suspect if I remember correctly one of them came from the 705 the other one came from the Martian um, and that was it the rest were just bouncing rounds off the Doom Turtle as it used to be. That was the uh, the thing that the Doom Turtle would wander out into the middle of the field and everyone would shoot at it and very few would actually get through the armor. And that's what made it so funny. It was a laugh as everybody was trying and you could hear the bonks off the armor uh, all the time. Amazing. There's only two of these actually been built, prototypes, and I believe one of them is supposedly at Fort Benning. It'd be really lovely if uh, Sophie Lyon gets another chance to get down there that she could do a video on the uh, T-95. I know she did the T-28 a while back, and uh, so we can actually see what the real one looks like. But uh, yes, it'd be lovely to see the T-95. So if you enjoyed that replay... 
please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel we don't get as many subscribers as we'd like we're one of the smaller channels actually um there are people who've got hundreds of thousands of viewers and mind you they have been around for years uh almost a decade actually but uh, we're a fairly young channel but we still only have only just over one and a half thousand uh, coming up to 2,000 um, subscribers and it'd be really nice if we could get into five figures. So thank you very much for watching.